fortunate for many reasons to have our next speaker join us. Garen Armstrong, Executive Director of Shamrock Roofing and Construction, is a serial entrepreneur who can offer many insights into leading a company, having grown his father's roofing business far beyond the borders of Kansas City. He is also a survivor of a potential deadly case of heart failure, and his stories of overcoming this adversity, among many others, are sure to inspire you. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Garen to the stage. I want to thank you all for being here today and uh, being able to share my story. Um, I think I got this right. Okay, so uh, Shamrock started in 1977 by my father. It was a uh, side business, roofing, roofing with my uncles. I mean, they didn't have architectural shingles back then. It was three tab. Uh, so it, it changed a long way. And, you know, it wasn't just roofing, it was electrical, all this stuff that I learned. It was hard work, more reason I went to college. Um, and so, but what happened was in, uh, uh, 2016, uh, my father had came down with cancer, and I, prodigal son, I came back home to help my father. Uh, it was pretty much wound down at that point because he was sick um, to the point where after he was uh, he, he passed, you know, my mother was like, "Garen, what do you want to do with this?" And I said, "I want to take it to the moon," and and so. <laughs> Taking it to the moon then to where I'm at now, I had no, no idea. Um, but Shamrock was formed out of adversity. Uh, and so when I took it over, I, I, I came in, I implemented new, new, new technologies, modernized the business. You know, at that time, the roofing has kind of been behind the times. Maybe then it was two decades. Now it's only one decade. You know, more modernization, more technology, more drones, more, more adapting as a community for this technology. And so I came in and implemented new systems, built more, uh, bu built a bigger team, implemented it, and, 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 and marketing of that. Um, I'm going to pass that up. So the, the early years was very modest, you know, started at uh, this, this is the farm, a couple trucks, you know, five of us were running at three to five million, just kind of around there. I still hadn't built the right team yet. I didn't have, the test wasn't there for the, 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 the team. The te you know, we've always been involved in, you know, roofs for heroes, cars for heroes. We give 300 cars away, a roof away every quarter. Um, you can see right here, these people standing there. Those guys are no longer, and gals are no longer with me. Um, I had had, I was working a large loss fire claim and I was breathing in and doing a takeoff and in there I was breathing all this char and it gave me a sinus infection. Well that sinus infection uh, went to my heart and immediately, and then your, your body wants to naturally heal itself and so my heart was uh, expanding and expanding to the point where it, it, the elasticity of the heart wasn't there anymore. And, I did, I, and and I, I, this happened in 45 days, right? And so I immediately went to the emergency room and it was code blue. And they, they were in there checking, opened me up, checking in everything, seeing if there was any uh, clogged arteries, anything like that, and they didn't see anything. They seen the heart swollen and they're like, Garen, uh, either you're gonna die like this, you gotta, you're living like this, or we can do this new advanced research and you can be, uh, one of the first ones, the first one in Kansas City to hear this HeartMate 3, uh, where they go in your, uh, your heart, they cut the apex of your heart off, they sew this heart pump on you, in, into your heart, and, and you have a wire hanging out and you have batteries. Uh, and so most of those other guys that you, gals you see me, a lot of them left me for dead. And in an organization, absent a leader, you know, you're gonna lose a lot of people. Some stepped up, but all were impacted. And the people that stepped up, they locked arms, and it was just a three-headed monster. I had, you know, all, all, of, all of these guys and gals, they locked their arms and really carried me through this process. Um, you know, you can see right here where um, this is what the LVAD is. They go, they go in, they open you up, they sew this on the bottom of your heart, you got a cord hanging out, and you're living off batteries. And these batteries die. You gotta change them out, charge them, change them out, charge them, plug into the wall. Um, and you don't have a heartbeat, no pulse, no problem. It was just a flow to keep my organs alive until I was able to get a heart transplant. And so what I want to do today is, 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 is weave this story and thread this story through of, of the growth of Shamrock and my story through uh, the beginning of, of, of six surgeries in five years. Um, but, you know, I, I, building leaders, you know, as my, from a hospital bed, you know, 
my role as a servant leader is to help develop and coach you know, with a singularity of focus of resources and energy and, 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 and help grow the people and the team. And, and leadership is a lot about emotional intelligence. I mean, you can take all the notes in the world, you can go to MBA, you can go to Wharton and whatever else, but leading is, is something beyond that. And so, you know, we all talk about succession planning and wills and what happens next to your business. Um, and it's, you know, top level, like really, it, it's, it's cute. It's like, oh yeah, I got this and someone's else gonna take care of it. Well, until you're on your deathbed, all that, I mean, you don't really dig into it and make it so elaborate that it would be able to, to outlive me. And so my goal at that point, you know, the people that did step up were like, hey, Garen, what happens if you die? And it's like, they, they need to know. And so, you know, that's a session planning, that ability to be able to take care of the employees, let them know that it was going to still be able to take care of the, the coordination with my mother, who still owns the business, 71-year-old, who, who, who's in charge of this, and I didn't want this burden on her. Um, but to ensure that this organization would out outlive me. And we continue to grow leaders by leaders, by, by being out front and, and building with the end in mind. And of course, the succession plan and making you know, no one point of failure. Even if you've got a superstar in one area, what happens if he gets hit by a bus? You got someone else behind there right away all the time. Um, and then you know, how do things work if I'm gone? You know, do all the attorneys know how to work with the bankers to do who, who, who's stepping up? Um, all of those, those things. So crucial and it has been a very, very important role in my growth uh, or Shamrock's growth. Uh, and, but failure is not an option. You know, at that time, I'm, I'm a single dad. I'm taking care of three kids. Uh, if you put that, I'm leading research. I'm living with a cord hanging out of my body. The last thing they wanted me to do was be out in the field roofing, right, or, or anything. They wanted me sitting there hanging out with these, a bag and hanging off of me. And I, I, going back here, you can see what I did. I grabbed these football girdles so that I could put these foot, the batteries in my pants so I could put pants on still and kind of hide the fact that I was living off batteries. Um, and, and by doing that, I was able to, to, lead, to lead the team, to be out front with the batteries. And it was, if, if Garen can do it, I can do it. If Garen can do it, I can do it. You know, I, I'm, I'm having to live off batteries and, and charge them. But it was a leadership creator, you know, culture of love. I mean, you think about it, I'm dying, I'm on my deathbed, and these guys are with me, they're looking at me, they, they're, they're taking care of me, um, I'm taking care of them. And um, it, it began to, uh, continue to grow everybody else, right? I knew how vulnerable life is. I knew how vulnerable I was in this position is, but Shamrock is meant to continue to grow on without me, no matter what happens. And so we became, you know, the marketing and personal development, you know, the personal development has been a big growth in Shamrock by growing and grooming and educating personal development of the leaders and growing them up because uh, and then we brought, the brought all the best trainers to, to Kansas City, the headquarters, where you, know, you have 140 project managers. It's just hard to take some people to, to conferences and shows. So we started just bringing them into to, to, to Kansas City. Um, and so from humble beginnings to 11 locations, you know, we started out building the hub and smoke model, uh, starting out in Kansas, Kansas City right off I-35 and I-70. We're close you know, smack dab in the middle of, of hail zone, uh, smack dab in the crossroads of the highway so we can get everywhere very, very quickly. So, you know, we, we first went up to, this is the rapid regional expansion of the Shamrock Nation evolution. We went up, uh, north, up to Omaha first and then, you know, Lincoln and Des Moines and, and we found out the seasonality of, of, of was really, really starting to hurt us you know, in time of able to, of roofing. So then we started going down in the southern markets and we created a, a you know, a three hours around until we started getting so big, we started having one that's a hub that's like a daisy chain to the next city. Um, but we created them all identical so that they're replicatable. With, with production centralized out of Kansas City, we do have production manage, at each branch, boots on the ground to manage jobs and, and be there, oversee things. But uh, 
having everything centralized in one location has been, has been paramount in, in this growth as well. Um, the repeatable proven systems open new markets. Uh, we started out growing ourselves. We started out growing our banking relations, our capital stacks. We started out growing our CRM. Um, we started out growing our own processes. So having to create new processes and, and how we're going to do things a, as we grow. Um, you know, the Peter principle is real. It's when you've got people that have been with you, loyal to you, and you've, you've grown them along the way, um, but then their knowledge doesn't keep up with that position. So keep educating your, 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 your A players, your B players, to be able to sustain the growth that you're having as well. Um, so, you know, to tra and, and trained all the staff to operate it without me, but to replace themselves so that we can continue to grow from within. Um, influence and leaders be out front. The 360 reviews, it keeps the gun pointed at me. Nobody's beyond reproach, not even me. So it's so that I can be sharper, smarter, how I can help, where I can help at. It's, it's paramount. You know, I, someone talked about success. You know, you can, it's harder to learn from success than you, you, you do from your failures. And, and, and that's a real statement because you can, you can kind of get high on yourself uh, fairly easy. And that's why I think the 360 uh, feedback is, is so important to keep yourself in check and, 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 and stay humble. Um, but to, to, to separate yourself apart, be exceptional. Be the subject matter expert in your space. Keep studying everything. Stay relevant in your space. Empowering your employees and fostering a culture of leadership. You know, hiring A players is easy. You talked about that, but you still need to groom them and grow them. Uh, the B players, building up the B players, because we want to grow from within. Um, we just bring them in, get them acclimated in Shamrock culture, and, 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 and we keep the training going every day. We used to say, if it's training, we're training. Now we train every day. Every day at 9 o'clock, there is training. It's Zoom. It's, it's everything's buddies on it. People are at your offices. There's Google Classroom. They're, they're, all, they're all learning constantly. Um, and, and leadership training and ensuring it's a team effort and, and, and leading with heart. Um, so go, going back, I just need to stop. I, I, after I had the, the heart mate put in and I was walking around with the batteries, I was still working. I was out in the field, and, and I'm, I'm throwing a bundle of shingles, I'm, 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 and I'm loading a truck up, and I, I ripped the pump out of my heart. And you know, your heart don't have a bone on your shin, like, like you can't feel it, right? I didn't know it until I, I, I started losing all this blood, and I'm looking white, I can't breathe. What happened was the, pleural sac, the, the, the pump ripped out of my pleural sac and, and, and filled, I, I lost three liters of blood in my pleural sac that pushed my lung up and I couldn't breathe. And your body only has seven liters of blood, so I had lost almost half of my blood. Went to the hospital, and they're like, oh, my God. And immediately it's surgery again because I'm this research guy, the first guy with the heart made three. They're watching me, tracking me. They want to you know the medical profession is. And, and here I am. I done ripped it out of my heart. So I went back in, and, and the same surgeon was able to save my life a second time, um, cut me back open, sew that pump on, um, back in my heart after it was shredded. And I was, he was able to save my life again. That time, I got an infection. And so it was, it was pretty gnarly. I'm living with this infection and IV antibiotics, pus, blood, nasty stuff coming out, out of, bubbling up out of my heart, got infected to the metal of the pump, got infected, infected all the metals, the wires that sew you back together to where I, I, they, they went in, they tried to do the surgeries to cut all this infection out, uh, but it didn't help. I kept working. I put a patches over it, bleed through it. I'd put a sweater over it and bleed through it. Um, and, and, and to the point where the infection was just taking over my body and I ended up in ICU on my deathbed from the infection in three years. So I, wait, I was on that heart pump for three years waiting for, for a heart. I'm O positive and O's can only give to O's. O, o, but O's can give to anybody. Uh, but O's can only accept O's. So I had to wait for, for three years for this. And this is during COVID, mind you. So I'm in ICU, no visitors, and it's brutal. And uh, there's, there's a lot of people that didn't make it, they didn't make it out of ICU, the heart floor, anywhere. And um, when I was in there, I was in there for two weeks uh, before they, they came in, they said, Garen, we, we, found, we, we found a match for you. And right then, 
I just started praying for that donor's family. I didn't know who they were, but I know they just lost a loved one. And I'm getting prepped, getting ready to go in to have a heart taken out of me and a brand new heart put in me. And, 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 and I, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I, I, I was in prayer and I just had this warm fog, this warm feeling over me that I knew that everything was gonna be okay. If, 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 I, if I woke up, then, then it was gonna be great. If I didn't wake up, I knew it was gonna be okay. It's, it, it's emotional. And so I woke up. And when I woke up, I heard these drums in my ears and I, and I didn't know what it was, but it was my heartbeat. I'd gone without a heartbeat for three years and I didn't know that you would lost sensitivity to that because I was the pump was just a flow. There was no pump, no heartbeat. It was so just to keep the blood moving to your organs. So when I woke up and that heartbeat was 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 bounding, it was just a glorious sound, and I and I knew I made it, and uh, and so but I still had all this all this infection in me. I had all this. Um, around me, but, but it was miraculous. Another God thing is my white blood cells started coming down, coming down so fast that after three days, they actually got me out of ICU and just put me on, on the regular the heart floor to where most people don't get to get out in a week, but I was able to go home in a week. Now, I probably shouldn't have gone home, but it was in the middle of COVID and there was so much death, destruction and everything going on, mayhem. And those doctors and nurses, they needed some hope and some inspiration. I've been in there for so long. I've been there for three years in and out. So I had a relationship with them. And so for them, to, when I was able to get, get wheeled out of there, now mind you, I probably went home and laid in bed for a month, um, but, it, but it, was, it was good for them as well. Um, when you get a new heart, your body rejects foreign objects in your body. So I have to take all 50 pills a day to make sure that I don't reject um, constant maintenance, uh, and, and your body take, getting used to these pills. You know, how's your kidneys and your liver going to uh, uh, fill with these pills? And so, you know, getting adjusted to those new norms. And in fact, as soon as I get off the stage here, I got to go catch a plane to get back to the hospital tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. because I got to go do a biopsy down my juggler to pull, to test to see if I'm in rejection again or not because of my third year of my heart transplant. So um, getting adjusted to the new norm, and the doctor said, you got a Ferrari heart, Garen, but it don't like stress. And I'm like, now what? <laughs> I, I've waited for the three years. I got the heart transplant. You know, I've had these goals to get here. I didn't spend any money. I, I say, drove the same 10-year-old truck, still have it. I was all focused just on my, my children, getting their trusts, wills, get, getting them squared away. I just, I was... My succession planning was so deep, I would bought my burial plot. So, you know, less stress. I'm like, I run a roofing company. How's that going to work? And so, you know, I made a mistake. I, I, then I went and bought the big lake house, and I bought the two boats. And I realized, I was sitting on, on, on you know, out there, and it was great. And I realized, but, but I was miserable. This wasn't for me, right? I'm meant, to, I'm meant for purpose, and, and, that, and, so, and giving back. So I still got the boat and lakes and all that, the lake house, but I, I, I don't make it down there. Um, you know, and, and during that time also, it was, you know, do I sell my business then or, or, you know, do, or, or, or what? I, but the main thing was taking care of, of, of the team, the family that, that had taken care of me in locked arms to be able to have this magnificent growth while I'm in and out of the hospital. You know, six surgeries in five years. And so... During that time, I was like, you know what? Life is about giving back. And so I wanted to be the light for somebody, right? A lot of people were watching my story. You know, a lot of times you want to be the light for yourself, but that's not what it is. I mean, it's there to be and inspire someone else who's struggling, going through something, and, and that's why I wanted to be. So that I can show them that, that if I can do it, you can do it. Um, so the goal is to in inspire other people through my experience, to live for a greater good, and that dreams do build dreams. For example, my goal was like, okay, I got a life, uh, new, new heart, now what? Right, like Neil Armstrong, his entire goal in life was to land on the moon. And, and when he finally got on the moon, 
he fell into the greatest depression ever, became an alcoholic, worthless, and until he created and set new goals, was he be able to get back on the track. And that's kind of where I was at. I was like, well, I got a successful business, you know, I buy, do I semi-retire, do I sell this, what, what? I, you know, I went to market, I found out it wasn't for me. But real quick, I got a, I don't have much time, I got a lot of stories to do, so if you want to scan this real quick, it, it, dreams build dreams, do you feel your current path is building yours? I'm gonna let you guys take a picture of this and vote, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep talking because I got eight minutes left, and then we can come back to that. Or, um, so growth gravitates, gravitates deals, and winners wanna be around winners. So in those three years periods, we grew 89%. Front page journal, Kansas City Business Journal, uh, and, and it was great. I did go to market at that time. I found out going to market is you're taking your business and you're, you're an investment banker and you're, you're, you're seeing what's, what's out there. I realized at that time the market wasn't ready for me and I wasn't ready for the market. I had a lot to do and a lot, a lot of areas of improvement. And that was the first time I heard about family offices, right? I'm like, wow, what's this? And so I started studying it, learning it, and so much, and I entrenched myself in it so much. In fact, I just got done speaking at a family office event at the other Omni by the PGA here in Dallas. So I, I found, you know, I, I figured, well, this makes sense. They got, got multiple businesses or, or properties in this business. So I started leveraging the balance sheet so I continued to grow. And so what I did was then I created, you know, we're about 40 million, we're 40 million now. And so we created our goals to 250 million. We can continue, and this is the first year that I haven't had, had a surgery. So it, it's possible. So we're already at 40. We, we've, we, know, we feel we can grow another 100 organically or, or, and, and through acquisition. So with that, attracting more deals, Shamrock's platform, these are the spots we're already located at here, and the green are new offices that we're opening up or acquisitions. Uh, these are strategic where we're at. If you overlap the Noah Hale maps, they apply right where our offices are. That I would like to say that was intentional, but that's just where I was born, smack dab in the middle of it. And so, um, but doing, so we started look, looking at, we've opened up 11 markets organically, and now we're focused on, you know, through acquisitions. So it's, it's finding the right, you know, you know capital partnership, the capital stack, and uh, finding the businesses that are institutional grade companies and being selective. Um, and in doing that, uh, right, we talked about outgrowing CRMs. We started about outgrowing, you know, a lot of things. But you, you, you have to have a system to keep you all together because otherwise you find yourself siloed in all these different technology stacks, right? So, you know, what I'd found was, you know, I'm an, I've stretched AccuLinks to the max. So I've had AccuLinks here. I built executive dashboard on top of that so I can see all the marketing. I had a, my, another marketing implement to pull my Google channels, marketing channels, radio, TV channels that I ever operate on, and procurement. So I created the last several years, several million dollars, to create this uh, trusty uh, ERP CRM, uh, one system to manage everything that we will be going to, to market with. But more importantly, it's so that it can hold the entity to grow together so when we don't bump our heads on 250 million, we still have our own technology stack to hold us together so we're not just being held together with you know, scotch tape and bubble gum, uh, which is important when you're continuing to grow and you want to uh, take care, ultimately bring on a, a capital partner, deleverage, and take care of the people that have been with you you know, to make sure that they're getting B, you know, that, that they're getting other stock options and bonuses. I mean, we offer health insurance for everybody in 401ks, so that's just a given, right? Like, that's nothing special. You want to know, hey, you got to take care of your middle managers. I've seen a lot of different uh, PE players in the space uh, forget the fact that they're the ones making everybody money. And so it's important that I created this so that everybody is being taken care of uh, as well. Now, I... Uh, I've got some clothes. I'm going to come back to that one. This is, I only got a couple minutes left while I'm keep talking. I'm going to scan this to, uh, is that dreams, building dreams? Your current, okay, so yes. I'm going to go to this next one. 
How do I? There we go. Back. Okay. So what is initially the most inspiring aspect of my story? A lot of times I like to know. This is, uh, I shared my story with Jill and Kim, and it, it was kind of like uh, the other guy's topic was like, what do you think the, 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 the topic of the speech should be about? And uh, it was kind of funny. So, so there's so much embedded and threaded in, in this story. So I, I'd like to know so that I can share and hone in on my presentation to be more impactful when I, I share in, in the future. Uh, if I push it. Okay, yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Um, but I, I want to go back and, and just... Sh can I go back? Well, you're... But, I, but I'll have some questions for you in a minute. But in, 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 in closing, I just want to say that you got to be intentional about every second of your day when you wake up but you're, and harness your time, energy, and your focus and make sure it's designed by intention because if you don't control your intention in your mind, trust me, there's an adversary that will. There's a new shiny thing that will take you off of your distraction and distract you from your purpose. And so, you know, today I, I want to thank you because I've, I've grown personally and financially through everything I've learned from the best success of being here. And, and through the secession plannings and, and living on, the ice, on my deathbed, not knowing if I was going to make it to be here or not. But by being able to, to, to be here, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful. And I just want to say that you are influential, influential, you're qualified, and life is fleeting. So take advantage of it. You never know when you may get a sinus infection that goes to your heart and you have acute heart failure in 45 days. I, I never expected that at all. And, and for you business owners out there, you got to please make sure that you have some sort of crisis plan in place because when it does happen, people will leave immediately and you're going to be left with a skeleton crew and you're going to have to be able to build that up and, and, and grow from there. Well, thank you again for this opportunity to speak. I thank you all.